My full name is Ian Ross Millen. I'm going to be 82 in August, older than shit. Yeah, I used to build things when I was a kid, when I lived in Vancouver in my grandpa's house. He was a carpenter, he had lots of tools, so I was always making something. When I was a kid, I, I, I got up in the morning and, and I was gone all day. We went somewhere. A lot of it was down in the train flats. When I first came to Cortez, I was in, a, in my early 20s. And that was this was before the ferries. The way he came up from by Paul River and across from Paul River to here on the Bart, Cortez has changed a lot. Yeah, yeah. When we first came, we had we had a grapevine. They called it. And they cranked so many so many rings for each person. But you know, you knew darn well there's other people listening to what you were saying. There ain't no challenge just living on Cortez. Well, you it's a good place to be. No government's not bothering you. And the people are all good people. And clean air to breathe, clean water to drink. When I started making knives, I just saw it in a book and I said, oh, I see, I can do that. Okay, so I got some books on how to make it and I started doing it. First knife I made was is up in the tr trailer, and it's uh, my wife's favorite knife. But I'd like to take it and throw it off the wharf so nobody'd ever see it again. I, I learned it the hard way, but <laughs> it took me a long time. Made a lot of mistakes. I still make mistakes, <laughs> but that's okay. I get to keep the ones I screwed up on. This is what it looked like to start with, and this is what. The, Finished looks like the steel is actually Japanese steel. When you get to the handle, then you know you're, you're getting close to finishing it off, and it's, it's a nice feeling to make something like that and, and finish it. Yeah, you like to see how sharp it is, eh? <laughs> wow. <laughs> he was in the rain. He wanted me to make him a. A dagger for killing people? I didn't do it. I wouldn't. <laughs> I didn't feel right about doing it. And I brought a deer home, and as when Stephanie and Elaine were little, they thought I was some kind of monster <laughs> to kill a deer, and I never did it again. You know, I see this beautiful buck deer, and I, I said, "What right have I got to take that animal's life?" I couldn't do it. I haven't got no advice to give anybody. If your nuts are wet, it's raining. If your nuts are stiff, it's freezing. If your nuts are wide, it's snowing. If your nuts are swaying, it's windy. If you can't see your nuts, it's foggy. If your nuts cast a shadow, it's sunny. If your nuts are hot, go sit under a tree. Well, if I wasn't doing something, I think I'd probably go nuts. There was always lots of room in the, in the hall to dance because half the people were out standing around, passing a bottle around. That would, uh, most people, when they bring a bottle, it would mix, they eh? pass it around. And then you'd get somebody like Freddie Riddell. He, he'd pass the bottle of overproof rum, not mixed around <laughs> until you take a big swig at oh. <laughs> Are you, are you filming that? Ha, ha, ha.